All right, so this is not something I normally do, but I thought it was kind of uh, something that I wanted to do because I just got done watching The Staircase on Netflix, and I also watch Forensic Files. And after watching The Staircase, I was convinced that Mike was probably not guilty based on the evidence they talk about in there. And then I watched... Uh, Forensic Files, and there's a bunch of stuff that they didn't talk about in the staircase. So basically, I'm doing this to show you why I think Mike is guilty, for sure. No questions asked. Um, I'm sorry to his family. I mean, it's got to be hard to accept that your dad could do this, but it absolutely happened. And uh, all the people in the documentary that were made out to be bad people or people that were lying, making things up, I don't, I don't really see that anymore. So basically, let me just go down kind of a list that I put together explaining why I think he's guilty and then I'll kind of explain why he isn't. Well, I guess I can go with why he isn't first. So basically his love for her. He claims to be very sincere. He seems to be very sincere uh, in, in explaining why he would never do it. Uh, he loves her. He cares about her. It's the love of his life, this and that. A lot of people could probably kill someone they love, I suppose, or once loved. Um, so I don't really, I mean, most murders are done by the spouse and obviously there's love there, otherwise they wouldn't be a spouse. So I don't know if that really holds any water. Um, but in Forensic Files, there's something that's very interesting. In the stairway, which I didn't see in the staircase, uh, the, the documentary, there is a chairlift, like, you know, kind of an old person's chairlift that goes up. I don't know if maybe that caused some of the lacerations, and I'm not sure why they didn't mention that in the documentary. Um, that would have made me believe more so that seven lacerations on the back of her head and those uh, patterns could have happened if she hit a stair, then flipped back and hit the, the chair and, and you know then fell down, got up later, and then fell back again as she finally died. Uh, but again, I don't know if that is enough to, to sway my decision. If you're wondering, The Staircase is on Netflix. You can watch that. I think it's 13 episodes now. It's it's good. It's entertaining. Um, and then the Forensic Files episode is on uh, Netflix as well. It's Collection 2, Episode 36. It's called like a novel idea or something like that. So make sure you check that out before you make any decisions. Um, so here's why I think he's guilty. He has a history of lying. He was a decorated Vietnam vet um, who said that he was wounded at war. Obviously, they explained that in the documentary, that that wasn't true. He was putting that on kind of as something to make his character better or show that he was a good person. I don't really know why he was doing that, but that was part of it. Um, in the documentary, The Staircase, the sisters, I think it's Lori and Candace, they actually go through and they're going through some of the um, writings that he has in handwriting, you know, basically his thoughts. I don't know if it's ideas for novels or whatnot, but there's some pretty eerie stuff in there when it comes to him talking about an insatiable or, or you know, something that you, you, you basically will always want is to, to feel love and murder and just weird stuff. I mean, I don't know the details of it. I didn't go back and find it, but that wasn't something that they hit on very hard. And I think... That was interesting to me to hear his thoughts on paper. I don't know if he knew they surfaced or whatnot, but that was one thing that I thought he's obviously got things going on in his head that were pretty strange. Um, Kathleen wasn't drunk. He, in the beginning of the documentary, explains that Kathleen and he had two bottles of wine, something like that. Um, if they had two bottles of wine, you know, even if she had half a bottle of wine or three quarters of a bottle of wine, I would imagine a woman that th that's that small would probably have a higher alcohol content. I don't know that for sure, so I can't say, you know, it's circumstantial. Um, but he did say they went through a bottle and then they opened another one and went through that. And then she went upstairs. So kind of weird that she only had a 0.07 blood alcohol content because... That's like one beer, right? I mean, that's not much. A beer and a half, two beers, something like that. And wine, obviously, is more than double the strength of beer. So even a glass could bring her to that. I don't know the time frame. Maybe they had it over five hours, so that would make sense. Again, just thought it was strange that he mentioned they finished the bottle, went outside, 
And about 45 minutes or 30 minutes after that, she went inside and was dead. Um, and ch checked her email while she was up there and then died. Um, so, let's see, there is... Some question behind, well, there's a ton of damage. Let me just say there's a ton of damage to, to her back of her head for a stair fall. I mean, I could imagine knocking your head pretty good, but you're usually after the first impact, you'd probably be sliding down the stairs, right? Or you'd have defensive wounds, cuts on your hands, arms, trying to, you know, stop yourself from falling down. So again, hard to believe you wouldn't at least at 0.07 blood alcohol, you would think you'd at least have the bearings to slow yourself down a bit, not just fall straight back and smack your head and flip and smack your head again or whatnot. So circumstantial, I know, but again, very strange. Um, one thing that I want to know is when did Todd get called? They said in the staircase, I believe that he came shortly after paramedics, but in forensic files, it explains that he was there before paramedics. Very big difference in my opinion because I don't know how far he lived. I think that would have been important to know. And I also think it would have been important for them to pull his phone records and see exactly when this all happened. When did Todd get the call? When did the first 911 call happen? When did the second 911 call happen? It sounds like the ambulance got there about seven to eight minutes after the first call from what they said in forensic files or, or whatnot. So again, another strange situation there. Um, the blood was congealing when they got there, uh, which is strange because they got there at 2.30 and he said it was like 1.30 or so that all this happened, 1 o'clock, 1.30, something like that. So for it to be congealing that quickly, again, kind of strange. And that's why they do make a little bit of a deal about it in the staircase, but they don't really get into details. But what I understand, it takes a few hours at least for that to start happening. Um... There is blood that they didn't talk about outside. There's a drip of blood, and then there was blood on the side door going outside of the house, which they say happened when the murder weapon was taken somewhere and, and obviously gotten rid of. Um, 1 a.m. versus 12 midnight. Now, Michael specifically says that they were out there about 1 o'clock. She goes inside to do emails or, or whatnot. He then comes in 45 minutes later, which would be 1.45, and she's about to die. Six minutes later, she's dead. What's strange is they did forensics on that computer and found that the latest email was right around midnight. So that totally blows a hole in that story. Um, I don't understand how she could have gone in at midnight, yet he's out there saying it was 1 a.m. It just doesn't make any sense. Again, the timeline is so screwed up on that. And the other thing about him being outside is they said it was 51 to 55 degrees. He was wearing like a t-shirt and shorts. That doesn't make any sense because, well, obviously he said that they had some drinks, they went outside, they were out there together for a little while, which could be enough for him to get cold. I would get cold at 50 degrees in shorts. Um, but then he says he stays out another 45 minutes. Is that realistic in shorts in 50 degrees maybe but would you really put yourself through that if you could go get changed and put on pants and a sweatshirt if you're gonna be out there for an hour maybe hour plus I don't know it doesn't make sense there were red neurons found uh, I believe in her brain which signify she had experienced a heavy loss of oxygen two to six hours prior to her absolute death. Now what this means is she must have bled essentially enough to have this issue with her cells in her brain explaining that she had a lack of oxygen. She somehow stayed alive for an additional two hours um, and then finally died at that point. That would make sense because if she went up at midnight, he was downstairs, she found these emails uh, that were talking about him being bisexual, came down and confronted him, he killed her, uh, or thought